customers. You're watching Fox 38 News at 10 with Dawn Sterling. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Dawn Sterling. First on Fox tonight, a landmark decision in the computer software industry. A U.S. district judge has ruled that Microsoft is guilty of violating federal antitrust laws, bullying its competitors, and monopolizing the web browser market. Fox's Colin Spencer has a story. A big blow against Microsoft as a federal judge issues a blistering ruling against the software giant. It's a decision that could shake up the computer industry for years to come. It demonstrates once again that no company, no matter how powerful or how successful, can refuse to play by the rules. And over to the In a 43-page document issued today, a federal judge says Microsoft violated the Sherman Antitrust Act. U.S. District Judge Thomas Penfield Jackson ruled the software giant attempted to monopolize the web browser market and used its power to thwart competitors. Speaking at a news conference from Microsoft's Seattle headquarters, Chairman Bill Gates insisted his company has a strong appeals case. This ruling turns on its head the reality that consumers know, that our software has helped make PCs more accessible and affordable to millions. The judge's ruling comes just days after settlement negotiations between the software giant and the Justice Department collapsed. Government officials are still trying to decide how to punish Microsoft. This could include breaking the company up. Anticipating today's ruling, Microsoft stock fell nearly 15 points. Other high-tech stocks also took a beating. The Nasdaq dropped 349 points. It's ever. But Gates maintains Microsoft remains a strong long-term investment. Uh, we think there's exciting times ahead. Microsoft did score one important victory. The judge ruled the company didn't engage in illegal marketing practices in order to sell its products. In Washington, Colin Spencer, Fox News. Finding a small apple orchard in Indiana is slim pickings tonight. A new statewide report says small apple orchard operators are on the way out. Southern Indiana Bureau Chief Mike Grant reports. Steve Nesbitt's been around the orchard long enough to know he has one dandy apple crop coming on. But this may be his last stand. Nesbitt says the golden delicious apples from these buds cost about twice as much to produce as they used to, but the price hasn't risen that much. We used to, you could raise a bushel of apples for, you know, five, six dollars, and now it's pushing a ten dollar bill. And, uh, we can't uh, seem to get uh, the price up to where it ought to be to make it, uh, you know, uh, make it a profitable situation anymore. Declining profitabilities reduced this orchard from 100 to 10 acres already, and Nesbitt says the margin last year was so thin, he almost gave up. I was real close this year to, to putting the bulldozer to him, and I'm going to go one more year. The problem here isn't the quality of the fruit these trees produce. The problem is the apple business has changed, and there's no one to buy from the small grower anymore. Sell them. That's sell them. If you can't sell them, then there's no reason to grow them. These trees will move into full bloom in about another week, headed for a pretty good growing season. But unless small operators can figure out a way to get more money for their apples, then this could be another place where there used to be an orchard. In Knox County, I'm Mike Grant, Fox News at 10. Police are searching tonight for a man who robbed a bank in Paris, Illinois. One man walked into this branch of Paris First Bank demanding money this afternoon. Witnesses say he did not show a weapon. He took off with a small amount of cash. The bank closed its doors immediately after the robbery to allow police to dust for fingerprints, but the drive through remained open for customers. Hasbro is digging deep into its pockets tonight. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is making the company pay $400,000 for waiting too long to report problems with some of its infant carriers. The commission says Hasbro didn't report the problem with its play school brand carriers until nine children had been injured. The infants were thrown out of the carrier when a lock failed and the seat flipped forward. Hasbro denies any wrongdoing but says it agreed to settle the case to avoid a long legal battle.
Japan's prime minister is still in a coma tonight. The 62-year-old was hospital early Tuesday and is on life support after suffering a stroke. In the meantime, the chief cabinet secretary has taken over as acting prime minister. Party leaders are considering other candidates to replace the stricken prime minister. Tokyo's private TBS television network quoted unidentified doctors as saying he was clinically brain dead. Britain could soon pass legislation to allow the cloning of human embryos for medical research. London's Daily Telegraph says a panel of experts has concluded the potential benefits of cloning embryos to treat the sick far outweigh ethical concerns. The recommendation comes after a 12-month study. The British government will launch a public debate on the issue. Opponents fear the technique could be used to make any type of adult cell, raising fears about cloning a human being. Well, coming up, Kevin Opert's weather. He's saying you'll need a coat tomorrow. And later, if you thought a wrestler was a funny choice for governor, how about Elvis for mayor? But first, find out what these kids in KZ, Illinois, 600 balloons, and government forms have in common. That's next on Fox 38 News at 10. If you haven't mailed your census forms, you still have time. Forms were officially due April 1st, but because census workers want as many people to turn them in as possible, they're allowing a little extra time. Illinois Bureau Chief Christy Brown reports. Almost 700 school children anxiously wait for their part to help remind Casey residents that every person counts when it comes to the U.S. Census. Even though census forms were due the 1st of April, the city of Casey organized this event as a gentle reminder that it's not too late to send them in. In fact, census reminders have been so gentle that it's almost easy to forget that returning the forms is the law. If they aren't in by mid-month, census workers will begin knocking on doors. The Constitution mandates that uh, we do fill out a census form every 10 years, and it is the law, and legally you could be fined $100 for not filling out your census. So I suppose if somebody really wanted to enforce that, they could go back out there and do that. But we're hoping it won't come to that. The city of Casey is just one of many communities trying to hit home the point that more residents mean more dollars. Money for projects like a new $1 million addition to Monroe Elementary. Senator Judy Myers was part of a group that toured the school today to see just what more tax dollars can mean for a community. Brand new classrooms and school lunches for everyone. It's not just an issue of, of other funding coming in, it's an issue of our children and their future. And I, that's why I was here, because I think it's very, very important that people understand the importance of sending back the forms. And thanks to some excited helpers, that census message is up and away. Christy Brown, Fox News at 10. Casey census workers say 58% of area residents have turned in their census forms, and they hope their awareness campaign will increase that number. The NASDAQ had, it, it had its worst day ever in one and a decline ever. Find out if your stock survived. And Kevin says it may be spring, but tomorrow may feel like winter. Hey, Kevin, what's the weather going to be like? Well, I'll tell you, the weather is going to be chilly. Now, when we come back, I'll have complete details about what to expect, so stay tuned. See Tire Barn Warehouse for Uniroyal Tires with Nail Guard, which seals most tread punctures instantly, permanently, and repeatedly. Shop Tire Barn now and get a $40 manufacturer's mail-in rebate when you purchase four select Uniroyal Tiger Paw tires at any of our 24 Tire Barn warehouses. Hurry! Uniroyal Spring Fever rebate offer ends April 30th. Uniroyal. Tried and true. Romance is one thing, but timing is everything. My parents are the a &P, so we only have like 15 minutes. That 70s show, then experience the wrath ah! of God. God is picked. An all-new Family Guy. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. Salma <laughs> finally meets Mr. Wright. Just a second, baby. Mm. The Simpsons. Tuesday at 5 on Fox 38. I think it's terrible that you were burned as badly as you were burned. Roasted in a tanning salon. They could have burnt their corneas. It's all posted on all those signs. Mr. Coleman! This says I put I don't give a be rest warned. behind about the signs. Judge Judy Justice. Tuesday night at 6 on Fox 38. 
It's a battle to get their boyfriends back. Why does he want a Tonic when he can have a Rolex? Next, Ricky. Tuesday at noon on Fox 38. This week on National Enquirer TV, it's love. Hollywood's rock and chair Romeos have won the hearts of their young Juliets. Are these romances for real? Anger. See who's been bad, very bad. These hotheads can't seem to control themselves, so they've been court-ordered to learn to keep their cool. And war. The battle has only just begun for these celebrities. Instead of fighting their way to the top, they're fighting for their lives. National Enquirer TV. We've got you covered. Fox 38 News at 10 continues with the live Doprat 10 Storm Team's Chief Meteorologist, Kevin Orbert. And it's a beautiful night here in the Wabash Valley, although a bit chilly. And look at that wind, northwest, uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour. 49 degrees in the rivers at 1.9 and rising, but not much. Now, the high today was 58. That's compared to an average high of 59. In 1946 on this day, however, it was 85 degrees in 1987. We got down to 22 for the record low. Since midnight, we've gotten four hundredths of an inch of rain, 0 0.04 year to date. That'll put us at 0 0.65 or leave us there, depending on how you look at it. Now, a look at the live Doprad 10 radar shows us that uh, we have no rain out there remaining. There were some showers earlier this evening down here in the southeastern part of the Fox 38 viewing area, but for the most part now, any chance of rain has moved out. However, there may be a slight chance for a, a sprinkle or maybe a bit of a flurry, and that's it. So what about this rainfall and so on? I want to bring you up to date here about a word that I'm prepared to use now, and I'm prepared to say that drought is a situation that exists here in the Wabash Valley right now. We ought to have 7.15 inches of rain. This year we've gotten not quite that much, about an inch and a half behind already. And so I think as we get further into the season, we're going to have to keep a really close watch, and I will hear for you on Fox 38, uh, keep you posted about how we're doing with rainfall and so on. 49 in Alley, 49 in Shoals, 49 in Marshall, over at Joey's house, and to Rockville has 47 degrees. Temperature-wise, all across the two states, uh, we're starting to get some cooler temps moving in. Moline has 43 degrees, 50s down in the south, and wind gusts of 29, 28, 23, 20 miles per hour lets us know that, well, some colder air is on the way. And here's how Futurecast uh, anticipates the temperatures to be. And these bluish sorts of colors that you see here, these different shades, are an indication of cooler temperatures moving in. So it's going to get chilly tonight, and it'll be a windy, cold day during the day tomorrow with a high of only about 42 degrees. In fact, it's warmer now. It is warmer now than I think it will be for the high during the day tomorrow. And as for rain, well, the rain's moving out. And as I say, you might have a little bit of a sprinkle or two. That's about it. A few little snow showers up in the northwestern part of Illinois, and uh, even across the whole United States, <coughs> pardon me, national radar indicates that uh, the rains are moving off to the east. And for us around here, actually things are going to stay dry until maybe close to the weekend. Breezy, colder tonight. Sprinkles or flurries possible, an overnight low in the mid-30s. Probably stay just a notch above freezing. And uh, then for tomorrow, what we're going to find is mostly cloudy, windy, colder, maybe a flurry and a high of 42. And then for tomorrow night, uh, an overnight low tomorrow night. Uh, actually, a light freeze is possible. And I think your flowers will survive. If that changes, we'll keep you posted. Uh, an overnight low of 30. And the five-day forecast calls for a gradual warming trend. Maybe some thunderstorms back in the picture by about Friday and gradually warmer. And to Dawn Sterling, welcome to the Wabash Valley. Nice to have you here on Fox 38. Thank you very much. The spring is not always like this in this area. Well, it was so nice last week. I'm not looking forward to the cold, but... It'll be nice again. Great. Okay. Thanks. It's opening day for Major League Baseball. John Sherman runs down all the scores later in sports. But first, a bad day on Wall Street for the NASDAQ. More on that and your local stock report coming up next on Fox 38 News at 10. Oh, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. Last year, and then Pekin Insurance agents can process many claims themselves right at their own offices. No hassles here, because your automobile is as important to us as it is to you. You great, big, beautiful dog. In Rockville, talk to Kevin Jacks at Jacks Insurance Agency, located at the intersection of Howard Avenue and US 41. See Pam Witt with Springer Insurance at 823 North Section Street in Sullivan for all your insurance needs. 
Hi, I'm Dan Marino of the Miami Dolphins. And I'm Doug Flutie of the Buffalo Bills. On the football field, we're opposing team quarterbacks. But off the field, we're on the same team trying to tackle autism. Autism affects one in 500 children in America today. It's the third most common developmental disability. And yet there's very little research funding. Education, awareness, and research are crucial in the fight to help our kids. Join our team. Call the Autism Society of America at 1-800-3-AUTISM. It's the Kroger Plus Fun in the Sun sweepstakes. Every time you use your Kroger Plus card, you'll be automatically entered to win one of 40 trips for two at Kroger. What should you do to stop a friend from driving drunk? Whatever you have to. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times on Wall Street today. While the Dow gained some 300 points, the Microsoft ruling fueled one of the biggest drops in NASDAQ history. The tech-heavy market lost about 350 points. Fox's Lisa Kassman wraps up the day in business. Before the judge came the jury. Wall Street sending shares of Microsoft plunging more than 15 points ahead of Justice Thomas Penfield Jackson's ruling. Microsoft stock is now almost 25% below its all-time high set just a few months ago. And that weakness in Microsoft fueled the largest point drop and one of the largest percentage drops in NASDAQ history. The tech-heavy index lost a record 349 points, or about 8%, with Microsoft's bleeding accounting for about 60 points of the total drop. And after the close of trading, things only got worse. Microsoft's fears were confirmed, as Judge Jackson said that the tech behemoth violated key parts of the Sherman Act, a U.S. antitrust law by abusing its monopoly in personal computer operating systems. But during the trading session, where there was heartache on the NASDAQ, there was celebration on the Dow. While Microsoft is a Dow component, it did not hold back the rest of the industrials as investors fled tech and flooded into the blue chips. The Dow surged a whopping 300 points. Now here's a look at your local stock report. Now don't get all shook up, but there's been another sighting of Elvis. And he's not at the Heartbreak Hotel, but rather a Midwestern City Hall. We'll have that report later. And in sports, baseballs were flying once again this afternoon. John Sherman has the highlights and more next. We sell close to 3 million boxes per month. This is our smallest box. This is our biggest box. <laughs> Go on to the next question. For 20 years, Boxes Incorporated has kept its commercial insurance neatly packaged with only one company, American Family Insurance. Our American Family agent got to know us and to know our business. He's a real professional. American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. Any size, any shape, boxes are our bag. American Family Insurance. Every spring, it's the same challenge. How early can you plant to push yields higher? Your burn-down herbicide makes the difference. Aerial images test which burn-down is fastest. The first one in the black is the first to plant. Gramoxone Extra burns down weeds in three to five days. But glyphosate makes you wait up to three weeks. Start early and finish big with Gramoxone Extra. Speed with confidence. You're looking at soldiers and their families. Citizen soldiers, members of the Army National Guard. They train one weekend a month and two weeks a year while living at home, building civilian experience, pursuing higher education. They serve our country and community in times of need. Join them. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. Discover the part-time job with full-time pride. In the Army National Guard. Fox 38 News at 10 continues with John Sherman. 
Well, good evening, everybody. Major League Baseball season opening up this afternoon in St. Louis, but without Mark McGuire in the lineup for the Cardinals. McGuire had to sit out the opener with stiffness in the lower back when his teammates picked up the slack in the first Fernando Tatis with a run scoring single. And then Craig Paquette replacing McGuire at first three run home run. Eric Davis and Shawan Dunstan also homered for the Cardinals. Darrell Kyle allowed just one run on two hits. Over six innings of work as the Cardinals win this one, seven to one. The home debut of Ken Griffey Jr. got washed out this afternoon. The Reds and the Brewers had their opener called after six innings, tied at three due to rain. The statistics from the game count, so Griffey now 0 for 2 in his first Reds game. He popped out the third and grounded out the two-play twin bill tomorrow at Synergy Field. In front of the largest regular season home crowd in Texas Ranger history, watching their ball club pound the White Sox today. 10-4 the opener. Gabe Kapler homered in his first two at-bats, later singled home another run, while last year's MVP, Yvonne Rodriguez, drove in five runs with two dongs of his own. Kenny Rogers got the win, forcing the White Sox into four double plays. Once again, 10-4, Texas with the victory. Let's go to the scoreboard. On the first day of baseball, ah, you can smell it in the air. Toronto and Cleveland, winners this afternoon. Tampa Bay, a winner over Minnesota tonight. And Detroit up on top of Oakland early on. Yankees and Anaheim about to get underway. In the National League, the Mets and Atlanta, all winners today. While the L.A. Dodgers in Florida also win as Houston and Pittsburgh postponed. High school baseball in the area. Well, there we go. Now let's go to high school. There you go. North Central Top, North Vermillion tonight, 11-6. And in high school tennis, Casey Westfield picks up their first win of the season. Second win of the season, excuse me. Well, all eyes tonight have been on Indianapolis. The RCA No Michigan State taking on Florida for the national title. And the Spartans use three-point shooting. Out of a team, Cleves in the first half to jump out. 43-32 halftime lead, but don't look at that score because it's wrong. Flip-flop the scores. 89-76, Michigan State, the winners uh, tonight up at the RCA Dome. So, as I said at the beginning of the year, Dawn, Michigan State will win the national title. I am now three for three. And you were right, and I wanted them to win, too. All right, All as right. long as we got that straight. There you okay. go. Thank you. When we come back, Kevin Arper will update your morning wake-up weather, and we'll take you to a town where Elvis is alive and well and running for mayor. It's all next on Fox News at 10. The census comes around only once every 10 years, and nothing is more important for every Hoosier citizen. We all count. Students, workers, professional people, young people, older people, even sports writers count because the census determines what we're going to get from the federal government in terms of help for our schools and our hospitals. Let's make sure that we are all counted in the census on Census Day, April 1st. In nature, we see reflections of our children. The tree is the strong one. The ocean rambunctious and untamed. Like our children, each brings something wonderful and unique. They add color. They bring life. And to choose the sky over the water would be like choosing one child over the next. Earthshare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. To learn how you and your employer can help, visit our website. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteered. Do something nice for someone. We fixed stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up his house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. We, Ace, are my new friends. Are you into it? Call 4 H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. Eighth graders in Clay County have some real-life lessons to think about tonight. North Clay Middle School and business and professional women hosted the annual Reality Store Day. The students are assigned an occupation and a salary. Then they use the money to buy housing, food, clothing, and transportation. They even have to pay taxes and utilities. I appreciate the opportunities they've been given here. And this is the one opportunity that they actually get to do things like learn how to write a check. Most of us as adults never were taught that at, at this age. So this is a good opportunity for them to learn how to do things like that even. 
The students record their spending and savings and finish by receiving some helpful financial plan plan planning. Several kids were surprised how quickly the money disappears. Well, Elvis is alive and he wants to be mayor. This king impersonator lives in Phillips, Wisconsin. He has legally changed his name to Elvis Aaron Presley. And although his full-time job is tending bar, he has put his double blue suede shoes and is walking door to door campaigning for the office of mayor in his hometown. Election day is tomorrow and he's telling voters, don't be cruel. It's like you had a little bit too much cheese anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Borders did that already. Really? Yeah, yeah, down at Jasonville. See, you're new to the area. Yes. There was a guy in Jasonville. Isn't that where he's from? Yeah, well, mostly so. cloudy yeah. in the morning, a chilly breeze, and a temperature of 35. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night at 10, Fox 38 News at 10.